Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Allie with Amory Speaks and this is going to be the welcome to level two kind of video that I'm going to do uh, for my energetic systems series. If you're new here and you missed level one videos, they will be linked below. So please definitely check them out. Um, if not, stop the video, this video now and go and check them out. Um, just because I'm not going to do too much of um, backtracking. I'm kind of going to just give a preview of what level two is going to touch on. Um, so welcome, I guess. And um, let's, I'm going to do some screen sharing and hopefully this goes good. I attempted to pre-record this audio and then mash a video together, but um, it's more time consuming than I have the capacity to do. So I said it would just be quicker if I could just dedicate instead the 20 or 30 minutes to just the video with the share screen. Um, so bear with me. I hope it's visible and clear. Um, but I did also already share full versions of the, the notes, the kind of doodle things that I'm just going to share here. So if you want a closer view or if you want to look at them um, on your own pace and time, if you can read my writing, um, <laughs> they are on my YouTube channel on that community tab and also shared over on Telegram. So you can find them there. Um, I'm going to pull up the first here. And this is more or less just um, my kind of notes that I did before I recorded um, episode one and the one-on-one class for level one. And just in case quickly for anybody or even for recaps for people, you know, it's never um, a bad thing to go over what we know already, right? Uh, basically level one is what is a system and allowing ourselves to pull out of this kind of definition of system and seeing it only as 3D manifested um, types of service like industry and business or groups, um, social clubs and stuff like that, um, that we typically see and talk about with systems. That is a piece of the pie, of course, but um, it's so crucial that we don't focus too much and give too much weight to that one slice of the pie, forgetting about the rest, the all-encompassing kind of multi-layered reality that we're a part of here. So level one really kind of gets into that topic the more generic definitions of systems and how I like to refer them as energy exchanges because I feel like that showcases the transaction that's happening with systems and what we expect out of systems. Meanwhile, also, you know, showing that there's more than just physical action happening and also that systems incorporate more things than, than are just those physically um, 3D solid kind of versions, you know? Um, and I gave a couple of brief ideas of different kinds of systems. We talked about our inner systems and, and simply our organ systems and how the cell in itself functions as a system. Um, I also talked about our mind, body, and spirit consciousnesses that make up the layers of us and how those are systems on their own. And again, how we have an entire system of ourselves, our physical body vessel um, is an entire system. Um, basically, and I use this um, model, actually, I don't think I have it on the screen here. It's on a different page, but basically, the basic model is <clears throat> having a boss and delegating managers underneath the boss, splitting into um, subcategories, and then diving into those subcategories and splitting them down further into more definition. And, um, and then assigning those smaller workings uh, managerial title and, and allowing them to be sort of managers and bosses on their own. And then for them to dive deeper into their realm um, their level of consciousness that's available to them and create more 
um, definition, more nuances in there, right? Um, that is fractal math in, in basic English, kind of. That is the workings that happens with spreading infinite intelligence and creating through creator consciousness. Um, and I talked a lot about that in level one. It's so important that we understand the full scope of what we're doing here, what kind of beings we are, what kind of universe this is, so that we can actually see and um, assess all the different systems that we're involved in with more clarity and more honesty so that we get more of what we want out of things, right? We get closer to our desires and our needs and our wants um, by having a clear focus on where we've been and how to get there. And we do that through owning and knowing and speaking and working with our systems. Um, yeah, I guess I could show you, this is the other page of my notes here that I'm talking about with this sort of basic fractal breaking down of information, creating sacred boundaries. Infinite intelligence sets a boundary, creates a label of some sort and assigns that thing a purpose based on observation. And it's through creator consciousness that we kind of set that. And that sets the system into working as well. So that's kind of what we're going to be getting into further at a later time um, is how we as creator consciousness um, have a responsibility and a sovereign power at that point of conception in all moments of creation to imprint our frequency in, in our best way, you know, put our best foot forward in every moment. Um, and that's another kind of layer of the inside workings, the inside systems. And we will dive into that um, more in, in one of the deeper levels. But for now, um, in, in level one, it was just an introduction, just so that we have a gauge, sort of a long view of where we're headed, right, a map. Um, you know, I don't want to drag too much into a past things and I want to try to keep these videos quick. So um, if those things are intriguing to you or you're seeing things in the notes here that you really would like to hear a little bit more on like the basic given truths, um, definitely check the links out below because there's a lot, um, a lot of ground to cover. So for today and for what I'm going to be calling this sort of um, welcome to level two, sort of first day of school, welcome back kind of thing. I want to go over the basic function of the Taurus. And I feel like this is an important thing to um, make sure we're all on the same page with before we get into level two, sort of uh, like a prerequisite, I guess. Um, because it's a template for working and both systems work through this um, same template and both systems as an, I mean, negative and positive um, systems. They both work with this model, except they use it in different ways. But it's important that we understand the original working of the model and how it's set and the template of it so that you can see it repeated in many, many different ways. And so I'm going to now um, just share the zoomed in kind of version of this um, Taurus sketch that I did. Now, I am not an artist. <laughs> I am not um, claiming that this is anything great. This is just a really quick model that I want everybody to understand that many, many things fit within this model. And um, there's a couple of workings that we're always going to identify within the model um, that then we'll see changes because of what we put into the model. Um, so basically, if you see the main cross picture here, that is showing a plane of existence and the layers of um, dimension of whatever the thing is sitting in. Um, and for us here, third density, um, third dimension, fourth dimension, right? We have our horizontal and we have a vertical plane. And the zero point where those two meet um, is the, the center, right? 
just a refresh in case anybody hasn't <laughs> had maths in a while, right? That X and Y axis and in that middle center was that zero comma zero spot, right? It's nothing, it's nowhere, it's that center piece. And so I've kind of drawn this little circular thing in here. And the zero point's very, very um, important. It's that where the spark of infinite intelligence comes from and it's where your anchor to um, infinite intelligence resides from and, and is. And um, it's sort of the seed of conception, you know, um, and we can, and I'm speaking metaphorically as well, because we're going, we're going to do, we're going to put, talk about this in many different layers, but there's always the zero point in the seed in the center. And around it, if you can see, I have these kind of, um, you know, circular drawing around. And that is showing the outwards flow of energy. And inside of it, if you see, there's more of this like hourglass figure inside there. And that is showing the inward flow um, or the core flow of, of the being or of the thing. The torus is the outwards one, which looks, a torus looks like a classic donut shape where you, you know, the um, hole is in the middle and there's the outside happenings. The inner shape is like an hourglass and it's the inversion or the, the um, opposite of the donut shape, right? It is the pulling inwards and, and it comes in and in. And they are um, mathematically, geometrically um, opposite shapes, opposite um, or contrasting versions of the same thing. And um, it's so important that we remember and understand and know that all things, all creations within this setting um, hold within them this dual capacity, this opposing push and pull force um, that is, uh, it is a marker in a setting. <laughs> And um, it's, I love that it's like a beautiful inside joke, a beautiful little um, like pinch of confirmation or, or a nod from the universe to be like, yeah, um, it's all, it's all there. <laughs> it, it is all about give and take, balancing, light and dark, day and night, uh, positive and negative. Neither is more important than the other. They're both a basic function of the foundation of the working of the setting. Um, and we'll get more into this. I'm gonna talk way more in depth about, um, about that when we use actual models inside of the template. This is just the template. Um, what do I mean by that? If you are familiar with the earth, right? We can set our whole of reality of earth in the center of this drawing and the earth, if you remember, has magnetic poles, right? And perhaps you've seen images and pictures and drawings of it that explaining how the poles work. And you've seen the arrows and the drawings of the torus around the earth, right? The energy and electricity that's flowing around the earth. Um, in the inner side, we have the core, right? And we have the magnetics of the inner, the inner earth. Um, however you like to, to, to look at that and, and whatever. There's many different versions of this and I'm not claiming or putting a stamp on any kind of um, thing about earth right now. I'm just giving, these are metaphorical examples. We know the universe works this way. So we, sh we must accept that in a function um, and from a certain perspective, earth also works this way. We have a zero point in the middle and we have magnetic sort of pullings in the center. Um, we can also put a single um, atom in this sort of same drawing and see the flowing of energy around it, um, you know, as the electron cloud that they call that. Um, and the inner workings, the proton and the neutron of the magnetics balancing and working inside there. I don't uh, resonate a lot with that, but I do see from a perspective that it has resonances. Um, but yeah, human body, same thing. You could put us right in there and, um, and you would see your aura or your Taurus around you with your electric cloud sort of around you. And we have our inner workings inside here, working with the magnetics. Um, this 
um, this, sh this sort of shape in the understandings, um, it's very helpful to know how that, that the outline, I guess. And so that's sort of the gist of it. That's where I'm gonna leave it for now. Um, but understand that just because we're placing and we're putting these um, workings on a three-dimensional plane, um, the same workings, I believe, are mirrored in working on other planes, in, in astral and etheric realms and um, in the unseen, you know, um, and I talked, I talked a lot about that in episode one discussions about um, how important it is that we accept and know that we don't see the full spectrum of light, that we don't hear the full spectrums of sound, that there are things that are unseeable, unspeakable, unknowable to us here on earth. And, um, and that there is capacities that are unmeasurable, but it doesn't make them any less real um, and that they do follow the same frameworks and that there's sense to them and logic to them and not to just throw them out and cast them out aside as um, outliers or um, paranormal and, and just say, no, they don't fit the statistics of what we've said. They don't fit our parameters. So we don't include them in, in the subset at all. They just get cast aside and, th and that's not correct. And um, it's my hope here that we can kind of get away from that and, and see things from, or um, imagine things from a more uh, full spectrum sort of view. So I'm gonna switch um, screens again here and just bring up my last screen share here. so that we can talk about the basic differences of the function of the torus, depending on the charge, the polarity. Um, and that is set by the creator consciousness, the intention. It can be changed. And if the, if the intention is there to change the system, or to change the flow of energy. Um, however, it takes a realm or a, a large spectrum of conscious awareness of both light and dark in order to really switch gears for yourself or really change a system, whether it's an inner system or an external system. Um, and again, whether inner or external, they will all work the same. Um, but in, like I talked about in level one, it's so, so crucial foundationally that we all pull it back and then we work on our inner systems and we make sure they're very tuned, aligned, balanced, feeling great, gaining good momentum for us, working and running smoothly, um, and that we have great communication and honest transparency with, with transactions of all of our systems happening within ourselves first that we gain a feel for that, that we get honest with that, that we do that work for quite a while until we're, you know, alchemists and until we have this sort of, um, you know, the muscle to do it, uh, to do the heavy lifting and work and to actually turn our lens and look externally and be presented with external illusions and to have to find truth through those illusions. Um, because that's really what the external world is. And we'll get into that a lot later about um, the vibratory um, state of reality and what that means, what the blur of the present moment is and how we, when we interact and merge with other people's sort of reality bubbles, what happens there with co-creation externally. Um, but it's impossible to get there and to truly do that type of working and to even understand it to your benefit and to the benefit of others. You cannot even get there until you know the basics. Um, you can't pull a kindergartner up into a calculus class and make them get it, even if they're very bright, even if they love math, you know, um, they don't have the prerequisite knowledge. They don't have those conscious points of reference in their imagination space to anchor and create and build with stability and with comfort and confidence. Um, and, and that's the whole thing of it. 
um, in order to get what you want out of this place. Um, if you want to be lost in delusions and you want to be a victim, then turn your lens externally and don't even worry about it. And most of us have been on that sort of auto setting, lost in externalness and, and um, never taking time for ourselves inside. So that's why, you know, level one is so crucial and we all need to get back to it always. And um, I'll talk, I'm talking a little bit about this on a separate um, series and separate setting about how important it is for um, even people who've been awake for a while, even people who are energy alchemists, like I call it, um, doing honing and balancing work all the time, doing shadow and light work and really seeking their truths. Even those of us who are wide awake on our path, uh, we need to always anchor back to the basics always take it back to level one and reassess with open new eyes our own level one you know not other people's level ones not anything else but just our own S solid truth inner workings this stuff here your inner systems go observe them and test their um charges see where the polarity is at see where the seeking is at see where the true desires and intentions are um and, and you'll always find a deeper level. You'll always find new work. You'll always find a little shadow to work on. You'll always find something for, for dissection. And, um, and so to give people a better idea of kind of what I'm talking about here, how we can begin to understand um, the very basic workings of energy exchanges, of charges and polarity. Um, Again, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into what it is, please. If you're confused or you want more, you're dying to understand what polarity and charges are. I have links below about that kind of stuff that you can dive into. Um, because I just want to go over the basic functions here and try to keep this video short. So, um, <laughs> what you're seeing here on the screen, if you can notice the basic differences here, first and foremost are, is the arrows. Now you can see, I, I've tried to keep this as um, basic and as clear as possible. But just imagine for a moment and remember back to how I drew those kind of circular scribbles around <laughs> to show the real function of the torus. If you're familiar with the um, science academia thing of the, the electron cloud and how something moving so fast could, can't be spotted and so we just draw it as this because it inhabits all at once. That is what I'm trying to kind of display in 2D here in this little grabby doodle. So both the negative and the positive, no matter if the arrows are pointing this way and it's flowing this way really quickly, or it's flowing this way really quickly, it looks like a circle either way, right? And when you're first glancing at it. And Taurus energy and our flow, our auras, everything around us has that same kind of stability blur of circular motion happening. And it's only through real connection and communication, communion with creator consciousness of whatever thing you're, you're assessing that you could ever even start to observe and recognize the intention that fuels the Taurus. And it's through understanding, recognizing the intention that's fueling it, that you could identify which way it's working, which way it's flowing as ourselves. This is why I chose to use the human being here as the model and to talk about the basics and showcase it through us, through being a person, because um, most of us can find some relative points to this, um, this working. But understand that all systems function the same way, um, whether it's a person, it's an idea, it's a bunch of people getting together into something like a business or industry. Um, it's an energetic flow and exchange. And the intention sets the atmosphere. The positive or negative uh, polarity of the system aligns it to a specific orientation, a perspective, right? It sets it positive in this perspective and it turns and puts negative in this perspective. And different things are allowed and seen from each perspective. And they may seem and be showcased and shown um, as truths or laws of, of how things work. And, and they may appear and they do appear very real 
And so this is where it's tricky. And this is why it's so important that we do inner work, learn our truth meter, really know our sovereign worth and, and do our shadow and light work first before we ever get out there. Um, and so with the arrows, the reason that it's negative and positive, and I'd like also, let's try our hardest <laughs> to stay um, with an unbiased mind and not say bad, evil, dark, Satan, you know, um, for negative, and then say good, God, light, right, true for, for positive. Because um, we talked about this so much in level one about duality being two sides of a coin. And yeah, it's very easy to get wrapped up in either side and investigating and looking at the pictures on both sides of the coin. Um, or even noticing maybe the sides of the coin and how they connect. But to pull back and to see the whole coin and hold it in your palm and to understand that a coin is currency and it's used as transactions out here. And, and it is, um, you know what I mean? It has its own identity and its own sort of thing and working external from you. It, that's a whole other laying, layer of understanding. And so that's what I'm trying to pull us back into when we look at positive and negative systems and energy flow and systems um, and people in general, I mean the systems people are involved in, right? Um, let's just not categorize it as bad or good. You know, morality and ethics, we can use when we cast out our light and judgment and look externally later. But it's very important that you don't even bother with it at first. There's other reasons that they don't align perfectly with a negative and positive. First and foremost, if we think of negative as in a negative balance at the bank, um, or as being less than zero and being owed. And if we think of positive as obviously being more than zero of having a surplus, um, that's one great reference to understanding negative and positive systems and how they work, right? Are they built on a foundation of needing energetic input, of needing monetary input, of needing time as an input or whatever as an input to get going and keep going? Or, is it something that flourishes because it's a service given and provided because someone is, has the momentum and the energy already ready to give and, and set in motion as is. And what is in motion will stay in motion, right? Unless it is caused to stop. And, and this is another great law that we need to remember and, and not allow distortions and to look at it through a lens of positive functioning and remember that what that, that flow does work because we've been very conditioned to think it, in certain aspects it doesn't. Um, but it does. And, um, so with the Taurus and back to the flow of energy, right? The, hold on, people are here. Sorry. <laughs> Bear with the background. Um, the positive flowing Taurus flows upwards and outwards. Um, whereas the negative flowing Taurus flows downwards and inwards. Both make up this circle representation and both follow the spiraling path of this journey of the beautiful creation, you know, the beautiful golden mean. Um, the, you know, there, there's such beauty in that and in, in understanding how the path is the golden mean and seeking harmonious solutions through. And I've talked a lot about that in other videos. I'll link some of that stuff below if you're interested in, um, if you, if you're interested in, in that <laughs> kind of thing, but um, mathematics really does explain the universe really well in so many ways. So they both follow this sort of spiral that happens on the long view. But when we look at the spiral in a first person view, a lot of times it looks like a circle, a 2D, right? Everything's perspective, the way that you're looking at something, the way that it's presented to you and your angles available to comprehend what you're seeing, right? Think about when you see like a weird, um, one of those chalk drawings on the street that's like street graffiti. And if you look at it in a certain way, it looks like one of those 3D things. It looks like a big hole or something, or even something that's popping out of the ground. 
But when you look at it from another angle, it looks like nothing or it looks weird. It doesn't make any sense to your brain, but you, oh, shift and look from here and you see the whole thing. Re remember that. <laughs> that is a lesson. That is a working to remember that all of reality is like this and that we don't always see everything from the correct perspective. Um, not to say it's wrong or bad, but it's just not correct for, for now and for the, for the best understanding of what you're seeing, right? So yeah, all, well, everything works in the spiraling function, but the torus in itself, the circles that are created, um, they are a different view of that. Just like the double helix is the same thing. It's the same circles meeting together, this harmonious sort of thing through. Um, but and now I'm taking it a little too ahead of, of, ahead of things. We'll get there later into the explanations if you're grasping for real confirmation about why those things match up or what I'm talking and rambling on, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will dive deeper into that as well. But just know that a positive flowing is upwards and outwards. And it comes back in through the bottom, receiving, openly receiving, charging and flowing out. And the negative is pulling down, downwards and inwards and, and filling. And then it's pushing out the bottom and coming back around, seeking out what it needs, pulling it down in, and then pushing out its energy out the bottom. And um, this is... If you could hear, and I hope people have ears to hear and are understanding the consequences of what that means. And what I mean by that, I kind of have written down in little notes here on the side. So maybe you've already quickly read over this, but the consequences or the reality, the truths get created based on this function of flowing. And for the positive, the function of flowing upwards and outwards, right? It is an offering of service. You have this energy, you have this dream, you have this skill set, you have this um, special talent or affinity or whatever the case might be, and you want to share it. <coughs> you want to offer it out to others. <clears throat> Maybe it's simply you're a good listener, you're a good teacher, um, and you're looking to help others even. Um, you have this from the inside. Now, I talked about this um, many, many, many times. So if you're not new to my channel, I hate to be super repetitive, but if you are new here, just quickly, if you notice in the, in the center of my picture, right, I have the positive side with the heart and the flame. Yeah, that's supposed to be a flame. <laughs> um, sort of lit up with the kind of like drawing around it, right? And it says one truth fuels the fire because you're aligned with the truth, with your one truth and with the great one truth. And in case like, what is that? Or you're wondering, um, it's, it's super simple. It's that we are all one. We are all from the same creator. We are all from the before and we will all return after. And we are here in the here and now. We don't know why. Um, and you know, that we can argue, we can have, you know, philosophical debates and conversations about all of the purposing and the whys, but that's, that's neither here nor there with aligning with the truth, with your truth and with all of our truths. And that is that we are one and, um, and that we are this beautiful sovereign flame of fractal source of creator alive with the right to be alive and with the right to seek and love. And, um, and so if you hear that and you align with that, if you hear that and you think I need that, I want that, I have, I, I gotta get, I gotta have that or whatever. Um, it's, it's here for all of us. There's nothing you have to do to do it. Um, but it is, it's like an onion. There's layers to peel back and more and more depth that you'll get to on your own. But if you're aligning with that, if you hear that, anchor your seeking into that always. And you will always find positively aligned ways through. You will ensure that your Taurus is flowing upwards and outwards and that you're igniting yourself from inside. And that is what service to others really is. Because when we ignite ourselves from inside, because we're anchored to that truth, we see ourselves as a reflection of God. And we honor the fact that all other life here is also a creation and reflection of God. 
uh, we're, we're serving others. We're always seeking to do the best for ourselves and for others um, because we honor and respect that truth. And with that upwards, outwards flowing, right, comes the inward, the, the inward drawing up from the root chakra, from your roots, from your connection to the earth and mother earth. You're drawing up nutrients. You know that what you need will be given to you. You have faith in that. Um, and that openness and the magnetic pulling that's happening on the inside um, allows this. Now, um, I didn't draw it here, but, but I will say quickly, remember on the original model, we have the outward um, torus, but we have the inward hourglass as well. Now this one talking about magnetic pulling in the hourglass sort of out, um, system that's inside of us, the alignment of pulling. In um, a free flowing, self-sustainable system created with these two opposing forces of the torus flowing upwards and outwards and your inner um, magnet, your inner hourglass pulling up um, this way and pushing out this way, it creates a connection of zero point. It creates self-fulfillment, right? It's an ever flowing, natural, organic system, positive flowing system. There's nothing needed. As soon as it's set in motion, it will stay in motion. Um, and this is right because, you know, you're ignited and anchored in your internal truth. So pulling upwards, receiving help, receiving assistance, receiving love, receiving admiration ignites and fuels the flame inside of you. It's like blowing on embers in there. And it keeps your heart. It keeps your soul. It keeps your faith ignited always, even, even, even in those dark nights of the soul. <clears throat> Excuse me, even at a rock bottom. And I've been there many a times. I speak from experience and knowledge and, and truth because it is there and that no matter <laughs> what kind of little coal that you think is just there, just resting, cold and not even ready, when you allow that inwards pulling, when you realign um, your, those, the inner mechanisms, the chakras and all that kind of stuff, um, it's like blowing on that ember and it's, it sparks up and you're alive again, you remember and, um, and you have you know, you have truths to share. You have empowerment for others because you know you've been to a rock bottom. So immediately you have great wisdom to service out to others to help. And you see others down there and you say, no, it's there. Blow on your, blow on your flame. You know, um, that's how positive systems stay alive and stay functioning. And that's how the organic world stays alive and functioning. Um, and again, I made this short comparison to the root chakra and to pulling up nutrients and love and support from mother earth and that is what we literally are doing electric and magnetic and grounding and all that kind of stuff is so important for those reasons um on so many different levels <laughs> for so many systems um conversely let's just talk about the negative system here um if you see in the center of my little doodle, I have the same heart and flame, but I've kind of shrunk them in size. And I also put like a cage around them because they are caged. And I also drew my manhole cover metaphor right over there. The manhole itself, the manhole cover, or maybe you like to look at it. Sometimes I envision it as a mirror of reflection. Um, it does. It is a sacred boundary of reflection and it, it reflects away. And if you see how I have the arrows that downwards pulling and coming through your, you know, and instead of going in, into even reaching your heart center and reaching your heart and your internal flame, it skates around it. And it gets put into this sort of, I've drawn the cistern, attempted to draw this sort of storage unit down there. If you can see in that storage unit has an arrow in and out. And then I drew a little ledger with a, with a um, magnifying glass there right next to it. That's what that's supposed to be. Uh, to say and to show the accounting, the micromanaging, the logging and checking of each transaction that's happening, the keeping tabs on everything that happens when in, in a negative system. You have to know how much is left. You have to know what is coming in because your whole system depends on pulling more in. Your survival depends on how much is in that cistern and what your balance reads, whether it's positive, you're in the you know, black or you're in the red, right? Um, now this manhole cover, in case anybody is new and hasn't heard this, this 
is the initial lie, the first distortion that happens and that must happen in order for the system to flip itself. It literally flips itself. We take the image, we take the inner magnetic workings of yourself, of your truth and energy body, and we flip it on its head. And that's a, a thing I love about, um, actually, because I don't love much about religious dogmatic thinking, but the way that those religious um, constructions showcase the inversion, and they talk about being inverted, and they put everything on its head um, to show how the devil in inverts things. Um, that is literally met metaphysically what, ha what is happening. And when we lie, we create this cover on ourselves. Um, cover on our heart, on our truth. And we say, no, we're not from before. We're not anything. We're not connected. We are um, one life only. And we're just some kind of like lottery win, miraculous, every point just so happened to meet. And, um, you know, a lightning bolt struck some piece of mud and Frankenstein us to life. There's no real purpose to it. And it it wouldn't have happened unless X, Y, and Z had all happened billions of ways through billions of years. Um, and that we are not connected, that we are animals at some level with just some extra little evolutionary tidbit added on that like made us something slightly different. Um, you can be telling yourself those lies, you know, Another, another realm of that is like, I'm not worthy of my life or I'm not as worthy as others. Um, I'm not as good as others, not actually owning, connecting to the truth. This creates the inversion. It puts a manhole cover on that. It creates this in your solar plexus, if you're not familiar with chakras or whatever, but in your gut, sort of below your heart down here a little bit in that you know, I am center, that real ego kind of center, um, the powerful center, it creates a storage in there, a cistern of your energy and your worth and things like love and all that. And if you believe that that's all you get and that's all you have, and that in that belief as well becomes that all other people have the same thing, all other people do the same thing. And if you don't take care of yours and you don't watch how much is left in yours and you're not monitoring yours, uh, nobody's going to take care of you ever. Everybody's actually going to take advantage of you and hurt you. And so be very mindful, be fearsome, guard this with your life, basically, because it is your life. And that becomes the truth. That is a lie, but it becomes inverted and it becomes a truth to negative flowing systems <clears throat> and everything becomes built upon that. There's real consequences to this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, and I hope people are really hearing the depth and grasping the consequences to creating life, creating systems, creating industries and business um, debt based from acting like it's something owed, something um, something must always be put in to keep it going. Now, to um, bring it into what I'm talking about with the inversion of the, the, um, the inner workings, right? On, on the negative Taurus, we have this flowing of out, and down, inwards and downwards, excuse me. Um, and that energy, this flow of energy, seeking in, filling up, and then pushing out the roots, right? You're pushing out your energy out the roots. Um, it's totally the wrong way, <laughs> right? We think about how the positive thing that I just talked about, bringing things up through the roots, how think of trees, any sort of plant, anything like that, any sort of um, building even that we build a foundation down into the ground to anchor it, right? Um, <laughs> the, the negative flow is trying to push everything out, 
the way it's not supposed to be, you know, and it creates a repelling there. And this flow also creates the inversion of the inner hourglass or that inner battery. And so think of when you put two um, poles, negative poles together, they repel away from each other, right? They create this sort of boundary where things can't come in and they push away. That's what's happening down at the root chakra. And instead of being able to soak in your support and love and nutrients, you know, there's a natural magnetic pushing away or repelling that is happening down there. And you can't accept, you can't take in um, positive energy. You can't take in honest nutrients. You can't take in freely given um, frequencies that are positively aligned frequencies. It doesn't allow for that. And this is, this is crucial in understanding and, and why it's such a self-fulfilling negative um, cycle to get stuck in. And the momentum of it is very difficult to break away from. And if you don't do the inner working and heal your heart and get in touch with your truth and flip that inner battery first and get that magnetic push and pull happening. So where you can actually pull in things and you're not repelling down there, you're not pushing away everything. Um, you're, you're going to always find yourself in negative systems out there. You're going to always be creating negative realities and aligning with negative constructions out there. Um, and positive will be repelling and staying in your sort of peripheral, never, uh, never allowed to come in because of that repelling. Um, and let's see. Yeah. And also this stifles the flame, right? It's pushing it's um, pushing its energy out the wrong way. And so instead of your flame being able to be blown on and kept alive, it's like having a breeze pass over it, you know, where you can blow it out. Um, I really love those metaphors. I really think energy works a lot like that. That's why I am kind of describing it in that way. But know that there's also other really metaphysical kind of... Um, more scientific ways also to explain it. And we will dive into more of those later, but this is just so we understand and we can align with our own, excuse me, inner systems. <clears throat> and um, understand, get away from evil bad for negative and I am evil bad or that system within me or that little version of me is evil bad because it does this. No, it's negatively aligned because it's created distortions, it's lying to itself somewhere. So let's go figure out where it's lying at and offer service to help it see its own light, to remember its truth. And when it remembers its truth, it will let you know. <laughs> and it will also know what it, let you know what it needs. It's, it's meeting in the middle, you know, it's part of the compromise. And then you seek harmonious solution through that way and you heal those things that way. Um, and, and that work is continual. I don't want to act like this is something you can do five times and you're done. It's not. It's eternal workings. It's forever. But the more that you do it, the less you need to. Um, and I talked about this a lot in other videos. You know, it's a lot like personal hygiene or um, health and wellness, you know, or even meditating. If you're really overweight or you've, or you've got chronic anxiety, if you start a health hygiene, a regimen, or you start a med meditation practice, you'll have crazy monkey mind. You'll have real crazy cravings. You're going to have to spend a lot of extra time in the gym. You're going to have to really push yourself at the very start. You're going to have to really dedicate time and, and have motivation to sit on that, sit down every day and do that inner work to clear your mind. But you'll notice uh -huh, that happens, your own little Everest, and you'll get to the top of it and you'll say, wow, wow. I feel strong. I feel alive. I feel committed. And I feel like I've made some progress. And then at that point, your muscles, whether it's spiritual muscles or real muscles in the case of if you, you know, you're toning yourself and you're, you're losing weight, those muscles now are working better. And the same things that you had to really struggle to do are easy. You'll find ease and fluidity. And then you'll be able to just do little workouts, just do great exercise every day, little bits of it here and there. And that will take care of everything for you. You will never hit a health crisis. You will never be obese again. You will never have, a, you know, real health scares. If you can get to that place of regular maintenance. But so many of us are, you know, are in the big piles and we're in a hoarded home.
you know, and it, it, it cannot be taken care of with small amounts of maintenance at that point. But like all things, right? Acceptance that there has been a problem, acceptance that there is an issue, acceptance that there's distortions and lies within yourself, acceptance that you have shadows and problems and negative systems within yourself is key. It's first and foremost. And then yourself, your workings will tell you where to go, you know, um, but you have to be the observer. You have to go into it with honest intention of really wanting to assess the systems. Um, so this has been level two. It went a little longer than I um, wanted to do my little welcome video here, but this is the kind of um, foundation we're going to build onto into this level two aspect of inner workings, all about our inner systems, all about how to do light and shadow work, all about how to um, gauge all those different varieties of inner systems. So if you're kind of confused or you're um, curious to know what I'm talking about with inner systems, don't worry, we'll get into that. I'm going to break it down into varieties of them and talk in depth about that um, in my 201 video, which I'll be putting out shortly. Um, so thank you so much for joining me here. Let me drop my screen share here and close out. Um, like I said, I will have um, this educational 201 video plus a discussional sort of lecture video to go along with um, coming up shortly. If, you're, if you haven't seen one level one videos, they will be in the description. You can check those out. Um, yeah, all, you can always find me directly on my website, amariespeaks.com. I've got tons of stuff over there, um, all types of informational stuff, as well as my own personal writings and divination, tarot readings, uh, a whole bunch of free information on all types of stuff. So if you're interested in further education, you can check out amariespeaks.com, or you can find me over on Telegram, amariespeaks, over there. Uh, thanks so much for joining me for this little uh, level two welcome video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your comments. If you've got them, leave them or send me an email directly. You could always find that in the description as well. Um, yeah, and I will talk to you next time.